I apologize in advance. This thing is dirty. Gross. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Before we even get into it, though, I have to acknowledge the fact that the world is in a weird place. Uh, I've mentioned it in my last couple of videos, both uh, just talking about we're all in this together and also my injury. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that at the front of this review, I'm bringing reviews back just because I need that routine and that sort of sense of normalcy and schedule uh, to get through these days. I have all this gear here that I have been testing and reviewing for months now and figured let's just keep cranking out videos. I know many of you like to see these videos and it helps you uh, maintain that sense of normalcy as well. So expect some reviews in the future in addition to other fun projects that I've had in the works for a while. So this channel will continue to pump out some really fun stuff and I hope you're here for the long haul. Today's review is of a pair of shoes. Uh, actually, there's two reviews today. You might see both of them, um, but you're watching the review right now for the Nike Wild Horse 6. I am so excited about this shoe. Let me first state the obvious that the shoes were provided for review by Nike Trail and Running Warehouse because there's two reviews today. Uh, all opinions are my own. There is no obligation for me to say anything. I do not accept financial compensation for any of my reviews. It is all me and my opinions. Let's get into it. There is a ton of Nike hotness right now coming out of their trail camp. I mean, the Wild Horse 6 looks completely different than the previous versions, while the Kyger 6 looks very similar to the previous version. Uh, if you want to watch this review, there's a link in the description as well as on this channel. So you can go, go check out the review for the Kyger 6. We're going to focus on this. As far as updates go, the Wild Horse has just seemingly had a number of them each version. So whether the upper changes, the midsole, outsole, all of it just seems to change version to version. The six seems to be the most dramatic change, which signified to me that my feelings and opinions of the previous models of Wild Horse may not be what I feel with the new one. So I've been super excited to drop this review because this is the best Wild Horse yet. We'll find out. All right, let's talk about the changes to the shoe. Um, everything the upper is different the mesh materials that they're using is different the layout of the welded overlays is different the ankle collar is different how they're utilizing the lacing system is different midsole and layout of the midsole outsole all of it in combination is different it's a super unique shoe both visually stylistically and in feel uh, and it's one of those shoes that i I am liking. So as in all my reviews, I like to talk about the things I like and dislike. My review of the Wild Horse 6 is of course no different. Starting as always with things that I like, the midsole. So the Nike React midsole is something that I've liked in other shoes and I'm really loving it in the Wild Horse. Uh, it gives you a bouncy plush feel, uh, really nice and soft underfoot. You're not getting overly cushioned shoes. You're also not getting the really harsh ride feel that I felt in earlier versions of the Wild Horse. That is what makes this shoe stand out. So the midsole in previous versions with the rock plate and all that stuff, uh, it just felt too stiff. I never managed to break the shoe in. Here is version five, which I mean, even just visually, it's completely simplified in comparison. Uh, and I felt this was a pretty advanced shoe, but I just couldn't get into the ride. However, with the six, that midsole, mmm, plush, buttery, delicious. Build. So what sort of sets this shoe apart from the Kyger and the Pegasus Trail is just the fact that it's really overly built. Uh, in a good way. It's going to give you plenty of durability. In this one, the meshes and materials that they're using in the upper are super durable, super dense, and uh, you're going to get tons of trail miles once the trails reopen, and you're not going to really worry about these shoes breaking down prematurely. Comfort. I think the Wild Horse 6 stands above the previous versions of the Wild Horse purely as a more comfortable shoe overall. I loved version 1 of the Wild Horse, thought it was one of the better trail shoes I'd had experience in those years. Unfortunately, the next few versions of the Wild Horse just never quite felt the same. Uh, they got stiffer, certainly more protective underfoot, but just the feel was never there. The Wild Horse 6 gives you plenty of softness and supple trail feel, as I mentioned in the midsole comments, but in combination with this new upper and the materials they're using, you're gonna get an overall comfortable experience. My first opinions upon just inspection was, this is gonna cause problems, it's gonna get in the way, why are they doing this? Uh, it actually, doesn't feel bad at all. It kind of helps the overall feel across the ankle collar and provides a bit of better fit. Comfort is good. And finally, looks. 
So this is a super polarizing shoe. When I first saw it, the colorway was pretty awesome. I just was not a big fan of this basketball shoe style ankle. Uh, they grow on you, I'll be totally honest. So now I look at this shoe and go, yeah, I think it's ahead of its time. It's pretty stylish. Nike always tends to do that with their design aesthetic. They're pushing the limits and pushing the envelope. Uh, I'm excited to see what sort of color versions that come out with future versions here. That being said, it's not all Animal Crossings and Mario Karts. There are some things I dislike about the Wild Horse 6. Stability, primarily in the back half of the shoe. Uh, despite the fact that this heel is really overbuilt with midsole material up along the side of the ankle collar, I just never felt really secure running downhill or in faster scenarios of race environments just because the ankle just felt a little unstable. I would certainly chalk this up to the fact that the outsole and midsole in combination are much more rounded back here. Visually, it looks cool, but unfortunately, I think what that does is limits your overall lateral stability in the shoe. Laces. I think right here through the midfoot, you're going to get plenty of lockdown actually feels pretty good, but right up here where you end up tying the laces down, if you're trying to go for a really good succinct fit, especially for those bombing of the downhills, the thin tongue and thinner tight laces absolutely contribute to a feel across that top of the foot uh, of just too much pressure. Loosening the laces is fine, but then you lose some of that precision fit. So I think a bit thicker tongue and maybe some more substantial softer laces, not ones that as you stretch them become really narrow and almost like string. Uh, that will help solve that problem. And finally, wait, it's a hefty shoe. In fact, it is one and a half ounces heavier than the Wild Horse 5. One and a half ounces per shoe, so three ounces for the pair. Uh, that is a big weight gain, and I hate to see it. Um, I understand where that's coming from. There's just so many materials being used in the Wild Horse 6, so I get it. It's just, it sucks to get heavier, especially by version 6. You'd think you'd be losing a little bit of weight. That being said, the weight does not necessarily contribute to a worse overall experience in the shoe. I think the weight gain is justified with the amount of midsole that you're getting to sort of cushion the ride. The overall running experience has been upped. The weight has also been upped as a detriment. So while it's a dislike, it's kind of one of those, does it really affect everything? Uh, who knows? Which is it for my dislikes for the new Wild Horse 6. Uh, in conclusion, I think this is one of my new favorite trail running shoes. I didn't expect it purely based off of my experiences in the previous versions of the Wild Horse. As far as comparing it to the Kyger 6, which is really unchanged, very finely changed from the previous version, this is gonna be my new go-to trail grab from Nike Trail. When comparing it to the Pegasus Trail, which is still pretty much the same version from last year, comparing it to the Kyger 6, uh, this is the one I wanna grab. It just provides you with plenty of protection, soft cushioning, great for long runs, decently for short. And right now there's like screaming deals and stuff on it. So let's get more specific. Build quality, I already talked about it. It's one of my main likes. I think it's a super durable shoe, bomb proof, great. Comfort, again, one of my likes. I think that new midsole, the layout of it, the thickness of it, the softness of it, it's a good, comfortable shoe. Fit, this is, uh, it fits well. There's plenty of volume in the shoe. It's where you start to tighten down the laces across the midfoot that the fit issue becomes apparent. For me, same size from previous versions, uh, so you would expect that if you've tried on or worn or purchased previous versions as well. Price, $129 with 25% off right now. I have links in the description to take you straight to Running Warehouse to get the 25% off in the cart. That's a screaming deal. That puts it under 100 bucks for a Wild Horse 6. Kudos to Nike for doing that. I think it's gonna help a lot of people get into really good, durable trail shoes. Of course, I have to acknowledge the fact that Lots of trails right now are completely closed. So buying a pair of trail shoes doesn't necessarily make sense. Uh, but if you're like me and want to keep shoes for future versions and future adventures, future races, uh, I'm gonna hold on to these as long as possible. And the deal right now is screaming. And finally looks, again, completely objective. I am a fan of them now. I was not initially a fan of how they look, but uh, I think they're cool. I think they're kind of stylish and pushing the envelope a little bit. I mean, Nike just has endless capabilities to push looks and design, so they're doing it and I appreciate it. Bringing us to our final criteria is the Nike Wild Horse 6, a buy, try, or a why. I imagine you know what I'm gonna say. It's a buy. Um, right now, especially with the discount, getting the cheaper price on the shoe, you're gonna get a shoe that's gonna last you a long time, even if you're not able to use it right away. Uh, you will be able to run many, many miles in the shoe comfortably, and uh, it's holding up really well. I'm a fan. Bringing us to the end of our review. <laughs>
So now it comes my call to you. Have you got a chance to run in the new Wild Horse 6 or even Kyger 6? You can go check out my other review of the Kyger 6. Uh, again, link is in the description. But uh, in the comments of this video, let us know what you think of the Wild Horse. Curious if you are as fond of it as I am. That is it for today's review. If you liked it, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel. We are doing new videos here regularly. Uh, there's also social media links if you'd like to join us across the board there. And finally, at the bottom, patreon.com slash thegingerrunner. There are a lot of small businesses that are suffering right now. Uh, if you'd like to support ours, you can more than do that at Patreon. Right now, uh, for $3 and above on Patreon, we are doing daily live streams. We call it our daily brew. We get to get together in the mornings and drink a cup of coffee and chat about different topics, whether it's running related, life related, all that good stuff. It's really fun. So if you'd like to join us, you can just go to patreon.com slash thegingerrunner for $3 and above for those. Uh, it helps us and hopefully it helps you too. Mm -hmm. That's it, everybody. Um, we hope you are staying safe and social distancing like crazy. Stay inside if you can. If you got a treadmill, use it. If you can run around the neighborhood, if that is allowed, do it. You know, get outside and work those muscles. Get a sweat on if you can. But first and foremost, stay safe and follow your local guidelines. So with that, let's change the outro a little bit. Train as hard as you want. Race whenever it is allowed. And party the hardest. That you can do right now. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week, okay? Bye-bye.